What is up guys, today I'm going to show you how to actually get to diamond playing Yone by showing how I play in the different ranks. Just a quick mention before we get started, I'm trying to grow my Twitter, so I would greatly appreciate a follow if you find my content helpful. That being said, let's get into it. Alright guys, so this is Silver MMR and already two people got caught, Nocturne went into their jungle alone and died and then our top lane also died, so that's a bit of a classic game. Now for the runes, I am using Bone Plating, something I only recommend doing if you're playing against melee champions and also assassins, because they have a hard time, you know, progging it for free. Now Diana can use a Q of course, but still when she has to engage, it will be up most of the time. Now in low elos on Yone, you, actually, you can actually get away with playing really aggressive. A lot of people tell you to stay back and play safe. That is not something you have to do in low elos. Of course, sometimes if you play against a very aggressive early game jungler, could be Lee Sin, Javin and such, then yes, you can play a bit passive early on. But try to limit test a lot, play aggressive. Because Yone is weak early on, but that's only if people know how to abuse his weakness, which they don't do most of the time here. So a lot of times you might actually be able to pick up a lot of soul kills early on in the game. We took the E level 2. Lots of free hits you can see. There's just one trade right there and she's almost out of the fight. I'm gonna pop a potion in case we get ganked. Rip the cannon, but it's an early cannon, so it's fine, doesn't matter much. And we're gonna get some vision uh, towards this side. When you ward, ward up here. Not in the brush, because if I comes from this side, you can still see him. So you have vision of both sides. Now this wave, it's gonna crash. Almost, but now it's, you can see it's pushing towards me, right? So a big mistake people make here is that they just keep showing it in. You do not want to do that, because since this wave is pushing towards us, we can start to look to keep the wave around this spot. I'm gonna pull it up here. By doing this, Dina will have to overextend whenever she wants to farm. Or she has to farm with a Q and then end up, you know, keep pushing the wave a bit. It's a ward right here. Be sure to ping it since you're getting some gold. And then we just keep the wave here for a little bit. If she walks up, then she's gonna take trades to the face. Could be a kill, right? But does she have shield? There we go. So you can see, it's way, way easier to punish people when you do it like that. So when you push in the wave, the first couple of the waves, let the other ones push towards you, set up a good freeze at your side of the lane, and then when they will step up to farm, that is when you punish. And as I said, even in bad matchups, you can afford to play aggressive early on in the silo. Now we shall back off. I don't care if she's trying to set up a freeze, we don't want to lose the tempo. Getting the Berserker early on as usual on Yone, and then we can also get the refillable. This is just so you can get a bit faster back to lane. So stay around here, you know, then E over here by the item, and then E back. By the time you're back in lane, then your E will of course be ready to go. The top lane are getting pretty fat, but so far it's looking alright for our team. Getting some vision down once again, warding bot side, because the skull crab is up and the dragon is also coming up. He wasted the electrocute proc because of my shield, so that's fine. Once again, you can let the lane push towards you. Good trades here. Then you see the wave coming in, so once again, just keep it here. Don't just kill all the minions at once. Let the wave stay here for a little bit. Ball right there. She's coming around the spot, but I'm not gonna engage right here. I don't want to mess up the wave. Now she's level 6. We also got our ultimate up. So look for a couple short trades, you know. the one we are doing right here 
And the reason I went in at this very point is because I know that she's going to walk up to queue the Kana minion. You see the vibe. And also you can ping your teammates if you think she's going to gank. We have the ultimate to get out. But there's a ward there as well. We're gonna take the way around. If I had ignite, I would just go in straight up. When you have a big minion wave, then you can even take the one versus two trait. But Yone, remember, we got a kill, but we are still pretty squishy because we only have boots. So you can still get bursted down pretty fast. Right, ultimate is out. Remember your E working as a superior cleanse. Might have done this, so she should be around here, I assume. We can go and check. Okay, where is she at? Is she doing the Drake? Oh, there she is. I'm gonna take this one out and then also this one. That way she cannot clear out the bot side vision. And then we just keep pushing, you know. If you want a super aggressive early game, then Blade of the Ruin King, something you can purchase, which I will be doing. But first I'd like to have enough gold for a Vamp Scepter. We can afford to stay because Diana does not have her ultimate up, so that's fine. Hook under the tower if you can. Like this, that's fine. We'll have to watch out a little bit for the enemy jungle and the bot lane is also missing. Oh, that's so unfortunate. But it's actually worth it because we got one for one. That's fine. I'm gonna get the Vamp Scepter and I'm gonna go into the Blade of the Ruined King for that early game aggression. Trading one for one is completely fine here. See, I think she dashed and then ended up behind me because like when Diana is super close and dashes, then she will end up on the other side. Perfect, we're also getting a shot down top side. The wave is in a little bit of a bad spot, but doesn't matter. Because when somebody ganks you and you trade a one for one, usually it is worth it most of the time. We're gonna keep up the aggression and we're gonna try to Force them to commit as often as possible. The point where we have to start watching out a bit is when their jungler gets level 6. Because it's a lot harder to play around a Vi ult because it is point and click. But the general idea in these silos, especially in silver MMR, is that you play aggressive. Really try to limit test and that does not mean run it down. But try to learn the limits of what your champion can do. The only way you can do that by playing aggressive. Oh no, I might be dead, sadly. No mind, we made it out. Luckily, so that's a good one. Getting two kills, are we getting the third one? I had a feeling we were going to get ignited, so luckily the shield tanked a bit. We got two kills right there, also got a couple of ultimates out. We can take this plate. She might TP back, I actually think she has it up. I don't remember if she used it or not, but doesn't matter. And when this ward is ready, I like to place it around here. And the reason for this ward here, guys, is that when you reset and the enemy comes back into the lane, they will show the wave and then you want to know what they're doing afterwards. If they're roaming bot side, you can see it and then you can warn your teammates in advance. I share the thing I'll do like this because I want to buy the uh, expensive. It could actually help. It's fine, it doesn't matter if it's one rake. But she has the herald, something we do need to keep in mind. Okay, Diana helped out with the Drake, our Ignite is up soon. We just need that one item power spike, that is what you're getting with the Blade of the Ruined King. Especially great against those melee Bruiser here type comps, which they have right here. Short trades here, of course I would just keep going if I was not within the tower range. 
You can expect to get camp right now, so I have a feeling that Nautilus and Bai might be mid soon. I'm gonna keep the Dino to low HP, so at least he cannot engage for free. So you see Nautilus bot side once again. Just keep poking with the abilities. You have the ultimate to get out in case something goes wrong. Nice, and we see the Vi, and she also wasted the Electrocute proc. That's a kill on the Nautilus. Rusana might die as well. We can make our way bot side. No way she has jump up, right? I'm gonna stay here. Okay, I think I'll do like this. They can take care of her. She's low enough HP at this point. Nice. But if I win in right here, I think she'll just jump over. This way I can save my ult and they still get the kill. I'll just keep pushing, keeping up the pressure at all times. Warding obviously is super crucial, but don't waste too much gold on control wards. Rather focus on setting them up at proper spots, meaning that they will stay alive for as long as possible. Now we can buy the first item. And as I said previously, this is something I like to buy against those fighter heavy type of compositions. So if they have a melee heavy comp, and they're pretty tanky, then this actually gives you a strong spike because you'll be able to abuse it a lot compared to ranged champs. So that's why I'm going for this right here. I think you saw the vibe. Remember, keep up the pressure, play really, really aggressive, even in bad matchups. Bamping your teammates, cause most of the time, or a lot of the time, still not see it coming in. I'm gonna wait here in case she comes back this way. She might be camping, yeah she is. We don't have to go in here, it's fine. I can just go back to the mid lane, placing a ward here for my teammates. And then just keep pushing it out. Going for those plates, it's gonna expire really soon so most likely I won't be able to get more than one. He's still bot, so might be able to get bias hit it mid soon. That Dinah was waiting for a long time, but it's fine. We got two plates. I don't mind that she got the uh, shutdown. You see, the spike you're getting with the Blade of the Druin King, this is the stuff that you can pull off. Remember the Q3 into the ultimate combo, it's sort of a guarantee combo where people, when they get hit by the first knockup, they will not be able to dodge your ults. We're gonna keep poking under the tower if she walks up, hit with a couple Qs. And then you can also start taking away the jungle camps. In high elo I would get flamed by my jungler if I took away his jungle camps, but here it's fine. Might get altered by the Vire. Looks like we're fine. Can he uh, hit her with the E? Okay, it's fine. We got what we wanted to. She flashed too. Looks like I need to help again. I'm coming in. Never mind. Looks like he got this under control or what? Oh, okay. Pretty good, pretty good. Just fix this wave here and then we can look for a reset or maybe we will even be able to get the tower. They got the first tower bot side. Alright, let's reset. We don't want to stay for too long. But the goal here guys, as I said, they're really aggressive, limit test a lot. Learn the damage output of your champion, learn when, exactly when. He's strong, when you can go for trades, when you cannot. For a lot of the things I did here, I would get punished a lot if I was playing in my main elo, you know, around high master, grandmaster elo. But here, you can get away with it. 
So you have to treat it like two different games, high elo and low elo. In low elo, you want to play it really aggressive once you get to a certain elo. That's when you have to adjust your playstyle, but for now, it can easily work out. That's why if I smurf a lot, I pick scaling champions and I play aggressive with them. Because people don't know or yet know how to punish scaling champs. And you can see when you play a scaling champion and they get fed early on, you just snowball out of control and it is really really difficult to shut it down. Compared to if you play some sort of assassin, you know, like Talon, he can still get easily shut down in the mid game when you make a mistake and then he will fall off at some point. But if you play a scaling champion, even if you get shot down in the mid game, you still scale up. I'm just gonna keep uh, pushing. I like to brute force my way through the mid side. And then I just take everything. CS, hills, towers, objectives, dragons, heralds, everything I can get my hands on. And also making sure to keep up the pressure at all times. Oh, okay. Oh, what? Okay, I guess that a very interesting uh, mechanic. As I said, your E second part when you recast it, it works as a cleanse. Not only as a cleanse, but a better version of the cleanse. So similar to how QSS works. We have a lot of gold here, so I like to base as well. It would be nice if I can get his red buff, but I cannot risk people tilting as of yet. I'm gonna ping it, and if we if he pings me to back off, then I'll just leave it. Not pinging, so I assume I can uh, get this one. Right, let's peace out. We can get the shield bow. So that's the next item, and then you just continue into the normal build. The Infinity Edge. And when you're snowballing, of course, get this one, so you can clear out vision. Especially in the enemy jungle, so even when they had to enter their own jungle, they will still have to face check. Vegas TPing mid, so I'll just go bot side, you know, we are in the mid game. So a lot of ARAM will happen at this point, okay? But you still have to prioritize your CS and stuff, so you want to be in the side lane a lot of the times. Even if they get caught mid, you can still, you know, push for objective spot side. Just be careful if a big objective like the Baron is up. If there's a point where they can catch your teammates and then go for the Baron, then just group up. But for now, I'm gonna stay bot. They are extending quite a bit, you can see. This will happen a lot. But I'm gonna brute force my way through the bot side and force people to come defend. When I do that, it will leave room for my teammates to get, you know, objectives, farm, or whatever they want. Back off a bit, they are fighting mid lane. You see, they will get caught no matter what. But this time it's fine. That's a flash right here. So I don't die to the tower. I could hold it out probably, but I don't want to risk her, you know, staying in front and blocking it out. And we can heal up pretty fast because we have double lifesteal items and we just keep pushing it bot side, guys. It's a way that you maintain a very high CS per minute, like I have right now. And of course you can see on your E icon, when the mark gets cut in half, that means that your recasted E will execute. But keep in mind, if they use a shield right before you recast your E, it might still save them. So it's not a guaranteed execute, but as long as they don't perform anything else, such as healing or getting a shield out of nowhere, then it will get the kill. Away the jungle camps, everything on the map. 
then we will be able to buy the Infinity soon. And then we can just reset here. I could not stay for this wave because it was pushing in. And then we just wait for the Infinity Edge and then we have the massive spike. With this set of items of course you're gonna shred 99% of champs into pieces given that you're not behind. So now, even if you miss your Qs, it doesn't matter because of course you're building crit so auto attacks are gonna hurt a ton. But pay attention to how I'm also always making sure that I'm farming up, even when I'm as fat as I am right now. Always prioritizing getting the gold throughout the map. I'll keep going bot side. People get caught, it doesn't matter for me right now, I just want to push it out. Try to break open one of the base towers. Awesome, of course, Vega really OP at the moment. Even if he was not overbuffed, the cage is so OP in lower elos. Level 16, far above everyone else. You're not the only fit player on the team. You can see Vega are two levels behind, but because we have spent so much time focused on CSing well, and also getting solo XP, that's why we have this sort of lead. So don't just think you have to group all the time because your teammates get caught. As long as you can get something on the other side of the map, it's all fine. Oh, there's a TP coming in. We can go mid. Oh, they're fifth. So that was how to play in the silver. Alright guys, so this is a mid to high gold game and they have Aurelia and Shen. I'm not sure who's mid lane, but probably the Aurelia. In high elos, that is the hardest counter lane for your name. So it would make sense if he goes mid, but I don't know yet. But my runes, so I'm running Tenacity here because I have a lot of CC and then also have the bone plating. Because they have a lot of burst damage as well, something like a Nocturne. He has a hard time taking this out before engaging, especially when he ults. This is great and looks like it's going to be the Shen mid lane. Yone does struggle a lot of against a lot of different matchups. But that is the Shen, that's a lot better than the Aurelia. But same thing, even if you're getting counterpicked, level 1 and 2 is something you're looking to abuse if you can. Shen has very OP level 1 so just want to stay at a range and then just Q book. And I'm going for some extra early game power with the Blade of the Druin King. That would be very great against this tankier type of champs, including the Shen, the Aurelia, and all that good stuff. That was a good trade. Still had to respect the Shen though, because his the one especially is very strong with the grasp. Be careful when you're queuing forward because it makes it very obvious for the opponent when it's coming out and then they can look to punish. I think I'll go ahead and take the W here for the shield. Alright, that's fine. You can pop a potion here because otherwise there's a high risk that you're just getting ganked and he might even flash taunt. But the wave is in a good position at the moment. So far, so good. You're just looking to play the scaling game. I had to E out because of the cannon, otherwise I would have lost that one. But we're getting some good trades in. I'm gonna get some a good vision down, because it is a Nocturne. If he gets within range and he gets the fear off, then you're most likely dead. In these lanes, you can use your W to poke with, that is completely fine. There he is, you see, the ward just saved us from potentially wasting the flash. 
I would probably tank a tower shot if I went for this one. Was within the tower range, okay. I did not expect that, but that's fine. You see, still playing aggressive, but in a smart way. Not just perma or extending. Leona could be mid at the moment. I'm gonna hover close to my jungler. If she comes mid, it's going to be fine. It looks like she's not here yet. It's fine, he's losing the minions. And now, if you don't auto tag this minion wave, it's gonna push towards us. There's a ward right here. Oh no, I might still be dead. Oh, that's not enough, that's so unfortunate. But you can see, if you get hit by the CC right there, you're just dead. That's a mistake I made and something you can avoid, obviously. I was tunnel visioning a bit too much on the bot side. But it's okay, like we still um, even in farm and then of course we're gonna pick up this wave as well. And once we get to the point where we have played the Ring King, that's where we go ham. I don't want to tank too much damage from the minions. But it's in a good spot right now. Looks like bot lane is dying. Oh nope. They are trading kills. Okay, the Nocturne coming in. Oh, she's dead. That is a bit unfortunate. But then again, it also makes sense why Aurelia's top because Kale also gets hard countered, just like Yone does. Just Q poke behind the minions. This right here, if Nocturne comes, then we can just head towards the uh, might be but uh, but here based on how he's moving. The ultimate is ready to go though. Yeah. A couple player smith. Which is okay. We have the ultimate. Now Shen is level 6, so we have to ping that. Important to ping, and if you can look to cancel it when it's ulting, that would also be nice. See the Nocturne, he's level 5 so far. Could be, oh, he's coming. Just gonna back off. You see, he will look to camp mid. It is very normal when you play and sort of immobile champ like the Yone because he's so easy to gank. Something you have to be very careful about. Good trade, so if he ults right now, he's gonna be at no HP. I'll probably have to watch out a bit. I assume Nocturne is almost level 6. In that case, I would have to ult out. So if you let this way push towards you, that would be the best case scenario. There he is, he's still not level 6. Which is fine. We can catch him. Shenault not coming in or... Are we really not getting the kills? Oh wow, that's unfortunate. I was not going to use the ultimate because I would be tanking a lot of damage on the tower. Let's see if I can cancel one of the recalls. Fine. Alright, we can just back off here. Really unfortunate we did not get any kills, but look at the CS difference, so that's okay so far. Hopefully that's not a random ultimate coming in. As I said, I'm gonna go for the Blade of the Ruin King because of the early game spike. It gives you a very strong one item spike. And when I have to deal with 
the Nocturne as well as the Shen. And probably also the Aurelia. Any power you can get in the early game is gonna be of a massive help. The Nocturne, almost level 6. Have to poke him as much as we possibly can. So when he looks to ult, it's gonna be low HP. Nocturne. It's around the bot side. It's pretty hard to ward against him, if I have to be honest. So you have to be fast with your flash or your ultimate. So this is like a safer way for you to push out. Looks like bot lane, yeah. Maybe that can work out. Looks like it does. Nice. Yeah, not much I can do about that, unfortunately. Like they did not vote this one. Let's see if we can make something happen. Oh, no mind. She sees it. Oh, they even had the... Uh, oh, what? Jesus, man. They had everything up. Okay. I had no idea how my bot lane died. Without them even using the ult or the exhaust, but I guess that is to be expected. So just go back. They'll be in a guarantee kill, so at least we got the sums out. Or the exhaust and the uh, ultimate, so that should make it easier for them to survive. Don't have to push this wave now. But for some reason he's still hovering the uh, riverside. We just push. Because since Nocturne does not have the ultimate, we have a chance to push out the wave, so that is what we will be doing. We can get out, he can be stuck there farming, and we can go ahead and reset. Of course, Vamp Sept are very good first item. And I'm also running Tenacity here, because I have a lot of CC actually. So if I get hit by something, I don't want to be stuck there until I die. Normally you don't want to play around top lane, but it's actually good if she can get the kill ahead. But based on how she's getting destroyed, probably not worth it. Oh nice, looks like it did work out. Good ult. Watch out, kill. I have to ping, the Shen is coming in here. Just like the kill, 48 CS to 99. So you can try to call for the lane, but she's probably still going to lose. It's a scaling lane, so you can just let her farm. Instead, if you focus around mid and bot side, like if she focuses mid, then I can use that to help out the bot. Since it's bot lane meta. So this is something I do if I want to push it in a safe way, without getting ganked. For example, the Nocturne Ultimate is probably up at the moment. So we just have to play it passively. We have no choice but to do that. Wave is going to push towards us. He has two kills, but look at the CS. That's what I'm telling, if you just focus on farming up well, that is all that matters. Probably somebody could be here. So I'm not gonna go for a super extended trade because the Nox and Ultimate, which I assume is ready. And since the jungler is bot side, we have to be even more careful. Fine, his taunt is down. He did not take the chickens. So they are still up. Let's get some vision down. We have to be really careful, like, especially against something like a Nocturne. Uh, because these types of champs can easily set you pretty far behind. Hey, okay, I don't know if he's going for bot. Looks like he has suck him.
Alright, the ultimate and the flash is out. I should probably have let him finish the ults based on what just happened, bot side. And this is a way you can cancel CC right here. It's, it can be hard to pull off because you have to predict their stuff coming in. Cannot go any further. First, there's a chance we might get ganked soon, so I'm just gonna get out. That's a very fit AD carry. That would be a massive shutdown if that works. Nice, okay. That's some good stuff right there. Gonna get the more expensive components since I already have a dagger here, just so I can get the Blade of the Ring King. Oh, like get the components. Like as many components as possible. Honestly, I have no idea how they just keep dying bot without they wanna using anything. That is a bit strange. Let's see if we can do something. She's probably gonna reset. Can still easily kill us though if she has. I fully stack passive because she's playing with the Blade of the Ruin King. And she also had the Swamp Sub, which is fine. We got the kill right here, so kill can go mid. And then I can just keep push topside so I can get to my items faster. This way, Kill can get some free farm so she can scale up. And this works only because she was out of mana. If she was able to stack up the passive fully, even if I hit everything, I would still die because of how Aurelia works in the early game compared to Yone. Now we have this, so we are also pretty strong at the moment. Still obviously not enough. We need to get some more items. Preferably, we want the double crit. And now the random A ramps are happening. Oh, she should have tanked that one. If she tanked that one, that would have been a free kill on the Leona. Why are you not using the ults? So I cannot survive against the Aurelia. She is way too fat with the items she has. Therefore, we would need at least a Sejuani and me to kill him. Otherwise, that's probably not happening. Let's be very careful. Okay, they're fighting. I just had to abandon and then run straight towards them. Looks like a free kill on the Leona. We'll take that one. You see, not a lot of kills in the early game, but people will make a lot of mistakes when you get to the mid game. They will make a ton of mistakes, especially in this silo, and that's why you're looking to get back into the game. Until that point, you just focus on getting good CS per minute. Might get ulted. Luckily not yet. They are doing... Oh no, this is not looking... Uh, very good. She might die. Oh, she's alive, that's perfect. That's actually insane, that should not have worked out. And Kale is pushing bot side, getting the farm she can. Just stay here and try to defend. Alright, so far it's okay. Yeah, way ahead of the Shen in terms of CS. Gonna get some damage off here in a safe way because I might get also by the Nocturne. But this tower is gonna go down, we can just leave it. Okay, that's okay. We have a lot of skilling on our comp, like our entire comp is late game focused. That's why it's important that you do not lose focus, I had tenacity. 
Oh wow, I actually thought that ultimate would land right on top of me, so I just had to ult out. So I don't get chance to see it. But even with a lot of tenacity, that still took a while. I can get out. Oh, she could have killed. That would have been a free kill. Okay, well played. Fine. That means that the Sajani is gonna survive. I have to kite a bit. Now we can go in once again. I just need to stack the Q. There we go. Nice. Vayne also picking up some kills, so I'm gonna back off right now. You can see lots of ARAM happening in the mid game when the landing phase is over. People keep grouping mid lane for no reason. A lot of mistakes will come in here and that is something that you can take advantage of. I'll just go bot side here. Um, I cannot go top because the Baron or the Drake is coming up soon. Our jungle has secured two drakes, so that's nice. If I go top side right now, they will be playing 5 versus 4. He has this one and she's also really strong, but I really is pretty hard to pull off in team fights. So as long as we play around the Sejuani engages, then it should be okay. It can still go wrong though. If they forget the Ash ults. We could kill the Aurelia and then we can, we can go for... Oh no, what? Just saved the Aurelia, I don't know why. I'm gonna keep my ult for now. Oh my god. They just did not continue the fight, it's okay though. We could definitely have killed all of them, but I thought... I thought they would follow up. That's why I kept the ultimate, so I could try to hit as many people as possible. But it's okay, because we secured uh, three drakes. But if they did decide to come and help with the fight, we could have gotten the drake, we could have killed them, and then we would have gotten the Baron too. But it's in a low elo, so I can't really blame people. You see, this is like typical for silver. Even bronze, like bronze, silver and gold, is that people in the mid game, they tend to group mid a lot. So if you can manage to pick up waves in the side lane, you will get multiple levels above ahead of the opponent. So for now, I'll be prioritizing getting a, a little bit of extra CS. Not grouping too much. Then again, this is one of the rare cases where it can be very risky to split push just because they have a Nocturne and a Shen. You see they're grouping mid once again. Let's see if we can meet him here. Wait, is this worth it? Oh, that's why he's not coming. He's going straight for the kill. They, should, they just need to get some vision. And then just try to scale up by farming. Of course, they will get caught. That's gonna happen all the time. Even in high elo, that also happens a lot. It's like a safe way, even though I'm gonna miss the cannon. I could potentially get altered by the knock. That's why I just did it this way, and if he decides to ult, I could easily get out. Have to really watch out, because this is not a 1 versus 1. They have Shen, and they also have Nocturne. That's why I'm not getting baited into taking these fights. Now there are 3 bot sides, so they could actually go for the Baron. And not doing it yet. Aurelia insanely strong. Two items and almost has what looks to be the wit scent. Why is nobody mid is the question I have. He's gonna ult top. That's actually not looking very good. 
Unless they can finish him off before he gets old. Yeah, that's fine. That worked out somehow. Awesome. Honestly, simple things such as going to the side lane for picking up waves, even though your teammates might get caught out. Because if you're getting a massive gold lead on a skilling champion, then the CGs. Like you're gonna you're gonna carry. Alrighty, we can get the Shubo. Want to get a little bit more gold though. Oh, these minions die pretty fast. Let's get out of here. I'm also gonna take away the jungle camps. That is also something you should be doing. Unless your jungle pings you back. In that case, of course, leave it up, but... Fine. And then we reset so we can get back to... Back before the Drake spawns. I'm gonna path, like, over here. So if something happens mid, I can be there faster. Or if something happens bot, I can also be there faster. Really unfortunate for this Ajani. Nice try though. Still alive somehow. Oh, that's the kill skilled up. And that is our late game comp with items. So from now on, obviously it's going to be a lot easier, but you can see if you manage to stay alive in those frustrating early game matchups and also with the enemy jungler trying to camp, this is the way. Take that one, you see Q knock up into... The alt. Nice. Nocturne is alive. We do have the soul though. Let's get rid of the vision. Because they might look for a play top side. So I'm just gonna wait here for a little bit. Bit risky to take this one out unless doing it this way. Now we're gonna look to deny them everything we can, including their jungle camps. People are splitting up, I'm just gonna cover for the vein. Should be okay though, since there are four people bot side, with the Aurelia coming up soon. They got this, so we can just take top. Right, we'll just keep pushing it out. Our Sejuani is a massive tank. And our kill is also getting into the late game stage. Just gonna keep pushing it out. While they're fighting. Nice. And that looks like a GG. So that is how you can play, you know, with a fully skill income as your name. And also survive those heavy camping champs. So this is the high gold platinum game right here. If you pay attention to my runes, I have bone plating. That is because something like Talon would have to invest at least one important ability in order to take out the bone plating. So that's why it becomes good. But if you play against a range champ, then do not take this one. Then you can take conditioning or you can also go for second wind. And I also have tenacity here, something I use Pretty often on Yone, and that is when they have a lot of CC. 
They have lots of CC with the Nunu, they have the Malphite, they have the Vagar, most importantly his cage. So if I somehow get stuck at the stun, I don't want to be there for too long because then I get bursted down. But if I go for Tenacity here, I will want to make sure that I'm getting attack speed, more attack speed early on from other sources. So that could be a seal item or that could also be a Blade of the Ruined King. Playing as a Talon, of course, AD Assassins all will be difficult to manage early on, but as I said, in this silo, you can still afford to play aggressive. We had to watch out mainly for his level 2. Bone plating already doing work. One free hit. Just make sure you're not tanking the returning part of his uh, W. Just staying back and then we have to respect his level 2. He's one of the strongest champs level 2, so of course we do not want to be within range. We want to play around their abilities, you know, so when they waste one important ability, assuming they miss it, then you can go in for a trade. Nice, the W blocked out the damage. Almost another hit right here, but you can see the W level 2 is great to kind of nullify some of the incoming damage and also make sure that you're getting the CS. But just use that Q range, you have to stay back and out of range. And then the W also will last hit the minions. So we will have to dodge this W preferably. Oh, that sucks. I could have killed him almost. Yeah, that's no, no, pretty difficult to deal with, of course. I was not expecting that way. But of course, when it's a Yone, really easy to gank. He has to flash out. He does not. So great. Counter gank by the Amumu. So that's perfect. We got a kill. But you just have to wait for a mistake to come in. So I want to push this, but still it's very risky because they have no no. I'm still gonna do it because I'm a nape. He's not gonna flash at me, right? Or no mind I guess. But yeah, there's something you don't want to do. I tried to push it out, and then I also tried to use the second part of my E to cancel the stun and then get back. I trolled a bit and I died for it, so that's why you don't want to do this. Sometimes you can get lucky and get away with it. They should not be there. They are making the same mistake I did. But yeah, do be careful of that, especially when playing against the Nuno. I don't know how he did not see that trap. So against the Nuno, this ward is not going to help a lot. You want to get some deeper vision. When you play against champs like the Nunu, Ramus, because they are way too fast, so when you spot them here, it's too late. Nice, dodged a lot of damage, and we also got the cannon. Right, dodged it again. And Mumu coming in, so I'm gonna fake a freeze right here. Oh, he's jumping over. Okay, that's actually good. Oh, he's flashing after what? He's too OP, no? Nice. I thought the Talon would just jump away once again. That's well played. Also got the assist. Same thing as usual. If you play against these bad matchups, you can probably still win the lane one versus one because people don't fully understand your weakness yet or how to abuse it. You still have to pay attention to the enemy jungle. If they have something like Nunu, you have no choice but to play it safe. Because he is one of the absolute best junglers at abusing immobile champs. But let's say they have like an AFK farming jungler, then of course you can play a lot more aggressive. We got the boots. And we need one more item and then we can start going ham. I'm not letting him get that passive proc, you can see how I'm trading. Oh, hey, I actually got it right here. He might die for it though. 
He did. He should not have went for that. But you can see, they don't quite understand your damage potential yet. That's what I mean that even if you're in a bad matchup, you can still get some leads early on. Now I have to back off because the Nunu might be here again. Oh my god, what? Okay. I was going to ult out. I timed it, good, but the problem is that if he's standing in front of me, then of course I'll we'll just stop at the spot. So without flash, there's no way to dodge that, unfortunately, but hopefully he can win top now since his ultimate is down. Well, let's see. They have pretty good scaling on their side, Malphite, one of the most broken champs right now, as well as the Vagar. Always ping the ward here because it gives you free gold. And then also keep an eye on the Nuno, which should be getting a lot of breaks for his team. Oh, that did not hit, okay. What side now? Yeah, but that is what Nunu does. They should just start respecting that. We have a good ward here. We also need another one over here. Otherwise, when he starts snowballing, there's no way we can get out. We have to take very short trades against the Talon. Him being an assassin, of course, means that his burst is a million times better. This perfect play around your knockup. But do not queue forward if you think your knockoff will miss because he can abuse it. If he does not ult, luckily he did, otherwise he would have been dead. You see, with a lethal tempo, you still have a lot of early game power. Can we uh, do something here? Nope, just hit back to lane. Try to see if we can cancel one recall. Oh, he's staying really far back. It's fine. I'm just gonna push this out then. These kind of games, even if you scale well, if you look at the champs they have, like a Malphite, that is definitely what can make things very hard for you. We see Malphite again. I'm gonna try to get the plate. This is like a safer way of getting some damage off on the tower without putting yourself at a risk. Uh, Mordekais is winning by the CS alone, so that's fine. Because when he gets his mythic item and a Rylize, that's why it starts to become really hard for Malphite. Should definitely watch out, he's low HP though. Okay, he's back net. We are up in CS, we had two kills, so so far it's good. Does not have his ult. Ooh, I could have ulted right there, but my E was resetting, so I would not be able to get in an auto attack. Could probably have killed him, yes. Nice, and Mumu got it under control, so that's even more worth it. So he can go for this, and I'm gonna pressure mid side. Force Nuno to commit. Go for the plates. Because it is so much free gold. We're gonna win just by having the CS advantage. And gold, of course. Let's see if we can find something here. But it's not up. Oh, he's doing it, that's fine. Yeah, I have to get out. I do not want to be there, bro. No, thank you. Hold him. You have to oh, he does not have it. He has to cancel Nunu's halts. He might flash out, so I'm not going to use my ult here. Oh, okay. Lost the Herald though, which is pretty bad. And as for what I ban in low elos, I never ever ban counters. What I ban are OP champs that require your teammates to play it out perfectly in order to stop them. So Master Yi, that is what I will ban a lot in low elos. Masti, Trindamere, and stuff like that. Sorry. 
him down again. Oh my god, of course he had his flash up. That's fine, he got the kill. I could have got it right here, but... I think he deserves it. For seeing the opportunities around the map. But you see, this way of Q knock up into the ultimate, he can still dodge it. The way you want to do it is that... When your Q knock up is ready, you have to be a little bit further away from the opponent. That way you can change CC and they cannot... Flash out, dash out, or anything. I had a feeling this would happen the moment I saw Nidalee bot against the Vagar. So he's going to be pretty problematic, especially now that he's going for what seems like an Everfrost. I might have to get some MR sooner or later. Look on the tower, of course. Some traits where you auto attack him while he's knocked up in the air and then you E out before he can get to do something. Now he's pushed out of the lane once again. You have to get this one because Nuno will definitely be trying to do it. Let's see if I can counter gang the Nuno in case he tries to go bot. Okay, nice. We need to stop the Nuno from getting the Drake. That is the uh, goal right here. But also, I had to fix the wave here. He's getting a plate because I had to run bot. Took one tower shot. So I can call for them if Nuno comes. So I just keep pushing. I'm keeping an eye on my teammates at all times. Please tell me we can secure that one so I can get the plate. Nice. Hopefully Mordekaiser wins that. Awesome. That's what you like to see. I just keep pushing it out here, getting the last plate. You know, if the opponent roams a lot and you're playing a scaling champ, you don't have to do the same. It's a bit risky using your E to dodge a snowball, because if you somehow mess it up, it will turn into a disaster. a little bit of damage on the tower. Once we reset, we have enough gold for the Blade of the Ruined King. Remember, I like to buy this against melee heavy comms and tanky comms as well. In this case, they have the Nunu and the Malphite. And also because they have a Talon, so this gives me a very strong early game that I can abuse. Head back and forth. Really fast trade and you can see a lot of his HP just gone. Nice. This one was pretty, uh, pretty secure right here because he jumped, so that was short of a delay to his jump, therefore I could ult right here and then get out. Can I get the tower? Oh no, what is he doing here? Right, tower's down. He's pretty fit though. Which can be a problem and also Malphite being fed. So this is a, definitely a game we want to be ending fast. Alright, Blade of the Rune King is online. Hopefully he gets his mythic item soon. So... Ailing can go mid. This is what you want to do when the tower is down. Because in the silence, you'll be able to get bigger leads. Might have tilted the Talon because of the kill previously. I'm gonna keep pushing it out. Malphite might try to uh, match my split pushing. Um, for now, it's okay since he doesn't really have any armor tank items. The problem will be a 1 versus 2 though, because if he attacks me with the attack speed slow, it would definitely make things a lot more difficult. Alt? Just alt. Oh, 
Oh, I almost got the third one. Okay, that's fine. Oh, hit the Malphite. Oh, you're hitting the wrong one. Nice, okay. Oh, that's well played. If I had a little bit more time to line everybody up, that would have been a lot more free, but... Got a couple kills and Kaelin survives. Hopefully he still survives. And he's doing the Herald. Looks like this is warded. Because Nuna's gonna steal it for sure. He has to help. I really hope that is not warded. It is not as important as the first one. Because the first Herald is used to get the tower plates. The second one is not that good, but still it can help break open one lane. Nice. Hopefully this will lead into us securing another Drake. You see, people will overextend all the time. Even I do it, because sometimes I don't pay attention. When that happens, that is when you can get back into the game, if you somehow end up falling behind previously. Uh, Mordekaiser can just stay top. We kind of want him to AFK push top side. That cannon died a bit faster than expected. I'm gonna push bot side, he can push top. Should be winning, but he's not somehow. Hopefully, he starts becoming better. Let's find the Nuno. We can catch the talent here. There he is. Get out. Oh no. Oh, I thought I killed the uh, Vega before he could ult. But it's turning out great, I think. Yeah, it is. They should be able to deal with this pretty easily. Nice. So a bad play turned into a good one. Is he in here? Oh, he ran away. Okay, I did not see that. That's fine. So I always extended, but it turned out to be a great play because the Amumu was here as well. All good. It's all good. We can see they have very toxic comp. This is not something you want to play Yone into usually. They have so much CC, like a Vagar Cage and Everfrost. They have Nuno CC, and then they have a Malphite on top of that. So, if you can avoid it, don't pick Yone into these types of comps. You're much better off picking something like a Castopia, who can absolutely shred this short range comp. Or another mage. And you forget the face beneath. He's not gonna stay anymore. We are two levels ahead. We're also farming up way better. So that's what I'm telling you guys about is that even if you get counterpicked, as long as you can see as well by being in the sideline a lot, you can get leads for yourself that way. We just keep pressuring in the silence. Dodging that one. And all of his HP is gone. We can just keep pushing it out. Malphite and Nunu's dead, so there's nobody to stop us. We could actually have went for the Baron right here. It's alright. Use this chance to maybe get the tower. Might have to ult out based on what Malphite is doing. But they're doing the Baron, so he should not be bought right now. I'm gonna walk towards my teammates. Oh, they're sending three people bot. This is what I mean is that when they try to get one player, they usually send like almost the entire team. That's why split pushing is definitely even more OP in lower elos. See the Malphite. Oh, what? Kaelin? Question mark? I want to make sure she could not 
Alts. Have to make sure he dies. So down he goes. I want to make sure that the misfortune could not all decay Lin. But she'll still die because of the Nunu. It's fine. You see lots of air ram that you can definitely abuse. And Mumu can flash him. Does he have it up? Yeah, he does. It's fine. Flash is out. Oh my days. That's a bit too close for comfort. Survived though, but you can see... Triumph would definitely ha held out a lot. Nice the fruits being up as well, so we can take away the camps. Sitting on almost 4k gold, so of course you don't want to stay in lane for so long. You get this? Okay. He's dying, it seems like. See if we can help him out. Get him? It should be enough, yeah. You see, I made it look like I was going to focus down the Malphite, then I waited for the Vagar to get baited in. Then I altered him, chain CC, ignite, and he's out. 4.3k gold, so let's get the components. Of course, the Infinity Edge. Then the next item we can buy. We can go into something tanky. So in this case, this would help out a lot. Because it sort of nullifies burst damage by making you take damage over time instead. And then if you get the kill, you also heal. Break is coming up and we have full control so that's perfect. We can see if you're great at, you know, just focus on farming, going to the side lanes, even if the air ramps are happening a lot. You'll get multiple levels ahead of your opponent. I have to watch out here. So the chain CC is the problem. I have to stay back a bit. Now we can go in. This is why I have tenacity. This is why I have this tenacity rune. Otherwise right here I would have been dead. I'm telling you guys, remember to switch up your runes depending on who you're playing against. This is a very good example of why that tenacity rune can do wonders. Just keep pushing it out. We had good sieging with the Caitlyn and also the Nidalee. We can try to look for the end. Malphite is coming back though. Ultimate should still be down for a little bit. Nice. Luckily it outlasted that Sonya's. And we can go ahead and end this. So that was the gold game. So this is going to be a high gold game. We're playing against a Vladimir mid lane. That is also something I see picked into Yone a lot. Because he has pretty good disengage. But it's also not that difficult of a lane. Uh, both are playing to scale up. Therefore you can also go full scaling runes into this matchup. Ideally if you let him push. And when you get around level 2 and 3. Then you can start look for traits, just don't get Q-poked too much early on. 
But if he walks within melee range, of course, you're just gonna Omega trade. And watch out for his Empower Q. Just want to stay all the way out of range when that's coming up. That's a lot of damage that you do not want to be tanking. Okay. Fine, so far he does have Flash and Ghost. But if I want to go for a kill here, I would have to burst him down. I know what he tried to do here. He tried to bait me into thinking he was going to kill the minion. Now we're probably gonna take out a flash. Nice. That's perfect. And we'll take that one. Fast combo because his flash was down. And he had no way to counter that if I hit the knock up. That is. Now we're gonna use the chance to push out this wave. Before the Wukong comes. The wave clear, of course, terrible early on. Then for Vladimir, and also this fort is something I like to put when I'm resetting because if the opponent tries to go for roam after showing out the wave, I can warn my teammates ahead of time. But that is the reasoning for their ward. You can basically see what they're doing after fixing the wave. Out there always ping the wards if you can because that gives you that free gold okay a bit unfortunate for the sign he was doing pretty well though based on what I could see Uh, quick trade here, of course Lethal Tempo does give you a lot of early game trading power. Therefore if you want to snowball, of course this is the best keystone to do that. Nice, I don't know why he used to stop you right there. I can actually mess up the lane for him. I don't have Ignite, otherwise I would have went for a dive once again. Quick trades here to keep him from healing back to full. We can go for a dive but it's risky because I don't see Wukong on the map. Therefore I'm just gonna bait out his abilities. That's, that's fine, the shield tanked a little bit and we just keep pushing in. If he resets, he's gonna lose some CS, otherwise he might risk getting dove, so that is completely his decision. He's staying, okay. Nice, we got the W out. Wait for this one too. We're gonna do the same thing again. Just push it out. It's a kind of wave, so it's gonna tank a little bit. If he wants to reset, now is actually the time. But he's still going to lose. Yes. And we are getting everything, of course. Also reset here so you can get the tier 2 boots and you can see the CS difference. As I said, when you play in these helos, even if you happen to be in a bad matchup, it does not necessarily mean that the opponent knows how to play that matchup. Usually what happens when they try to counter pick you, not Vladimir, but let's say they pick something like a Pantheon, they don't have a lot of experience. They counter pick just to counter pick, not because they play the champ normally. Therefore you don't have to worry about counter picks, especially in lower elos, because people don't yet know how to fully abuse the strengths of that champion. Is to a 6 right now. That's perfect. He should not be doing that by the way. Using the W is probably the worst thing you can do if you're playing in a lane where you can risk getting dove. Wukong bot side. He's not level 6 yet. So let's see if we can make a counter gang happen because they're committing pretty hard and we have Lilia coming in. Don't give her. Oh, okay, now mind. This should be fine. Okay, 
I aimed that ultimate pretty bad, but they still ended up dying, so that's a huge play from our side. By that I mean our team, of course. Let's see if we can block him out. He does have the ultimate, but Vladimir Leon barely has any damage. And he used his ghost. There we go. So now we got a kill for ourselves, since the last fight just resulted in assists, but that's also because I aimed at ult. Pretty terrible. We can go ahead and reset here, so we can get some lifesteal. You don't have to buy anti-healing. Normally, it can be a good idea to do so, but they actually nerfed anti-healing so much that it's pretty much useless at this point. Therefore, just focus on getting your main items, and as long as you are playing with Ignite, it's all fine. So, his Ghost is down. I did not time his Flash Summoner. That's something that can be great to do, obviously. And we can keep the lane here if you want to. Because it's going to end up pushing towards us. And when his W is down, that is when you're looking to trade. And if you can actually all in, it doesn't matter that you are going to tank that Empower Q coming up. And don't just show the entire wave. This um Oh that's bad. I tried to knock him up so he could not get Empower Q off. Now we can push, because we also need to heal up. One coming. Yeah, that was a good ult. So, it is a champion where you can snowball pretty hard in the laning phase, and also because of how well you skill, it will become extremely difficult to play against him later on, unless they have a team comp that just counters you completely. That's why when I play in lower elos, like gold for example, I play aggressive all the time. Sometimes I might end up dying a lot in this elo range. But a lot of the times I do manage to pick up a bunch of kills and that will help me snowball out of control. Because you're just looking to get Shilbo and then Infinity Edge and you're gonna destroy most champs in a 1 vs 1. Even the Shilbo spike, of course it's not the best mythic item but there's nothing really else that's better. So that's why you buy this mostly but when you get that, you start destroying people. Right, I actually have a winning bot lane, that's a bit surprising. I guess that is the Lilia impact. Now you can ward the enemy jungle, if the camps are up you can also take these away. If you do this combo fast enough, you can actually get out before the tower hits you. You have to time it when the tower it's just throwing out one auto attack on the minions. Let's keep pushing here since Lilia is inside the jungle. Just getting out so I don't tank that in power Q. We just keep pushing, looking for a play topside, probably a bad idea for them. Or maybe it's a working. Right, quick combo. Have to keep him low. But he does have a W up, and Wukong could be here as well. Therefore we're gonna hover the bot side. So we don't get ganked by the Wukong, or so we can escape. And then just T out, so he cannot get that Q-Prog off. You have to constantly like poke Vladimir over and over, 
Otherwise, he's just gonna sustain back to healthy HP levels. But this way, you keep the pressure up. Not stay for long here because the minions are gone. We'll just keep this up. You can see the massive CS lead here. That is how you'd completely take over the lane. I could stop pushing and then punish them even more, but I would love to get the plate. Just keep playing aggressive. When you have a fully stacked lethal tempo, of course, not something people want to mess with. Therefore, we're just gonna keep pushing it out. Since we're at a point where nobody can fight us. And it's only going to get even worse when we scale up. Let's see if we can get the last play, that would be nice. And then you want to rotate, so I spend a lot of time in the sidelines. Even in gold elo. Or silver. Or plat. Even though you had to adopt a completely different playstyle when you're playing low elo compared to high elo, what you do on the map for the split pushing part is still the same. Because that is how you get these high CS numbers, that's how you get that massive advantage over the opponent. And if they have been playing pretty safe mid lane, you are not being able to pick up kills, then when you get to the side lane, you have a lot better chances. To go for this place. Just keep pushing. We don't see the Wukong and Vladimir bot side. We can try to block him out. Oh, he had that up too. Let's go for this guy then. Don't mind, he tried to save the Ludum. Nice team player, but that's not how you want to do it in leak. I'll take that one too. You can see it becomes way easier at this point, but the problem is getting to this point. That is very, very hard to do in high elo, but in low elo, you have a lot of opportunities. Therefore, we're gonna go complete ham this time around. It's not every game where you finish the game with a lot of kills. Sometimes you have really high farm but not that many kills. Maybe because you end up having a lot of assists. I think we'll just back off here and then I go to the side lane. And I'll just go bot here, since my teammates are doing well, basically all of them, then we can afford to spend more time in the side lane. Kind of surprised they did not go for, what's it called, the hard steel or something? Yeah, this one, that's pretty OP. I'm gonna leave the blue buff up, since Lilia needs it, but then I'll just take away the other camps. If I was playing a mage right now, any other champ that can advantage of the extra mana then I would have taken it. No point ulting because he has the W. So now you can ult if he comes back again. Take these, people overextend quite a lot in this hero. So you can see if you know how to take advantage of it, of course there will be so many kills that you can pick up. And they are so that was a pretty short game.
now we are finding ourselves in a flat elo game because the gameplay becomes a lot better but we still have to focus on the basics so basically knowing when we can push waves and when we should not be doing that also starting off with a heavy counter lane and that's also a fist main or one trick and they have lots of burst damage and when you play against a melee assassin bone planning is really op because they would have to invest an important ability in order to proc it play against echo fist and any lots of ap therefore stuff like the witch send or force of nature would be great in this game but we will build depending on how the game is going if I'm falling behind, then I might get a little bit of MR to start off with. The Echo top lane, the Fist mid. He's very difficult because he's high mobile, high burst damage, and that is how you counter Yone in the laning phase. He cannot deal with that. Therefore, we have to watch out if he starts to see. We do not want to be within range here. He probably started with it. Hit it. Would actually hit. I did not expect that. But yeah, that's something you want to be dodging. Of course. And you have to play it safe, but there are also opportunities where you can actually trade back. It's okay, we don't want to stay for too long here because he has corrupting potion. We can look for an early reset if things are going bad. So I'm going to place a ward here first. When he gets to 3, that's why it starts being really, really difficult. Taking really short trades. Watch out that you don't just queue forward when his... He is up. This way he cannot Q into me, otherwise he would take um, damage from the tower. Going back a little bit here, still had to watch out. It's mainly obnoxious because he can go Corrupting Potion and then he just gonna out sustain you. He back off before he gets to proc Electrocute and his combo. Now we can ping him because he's a bit low HP, so I can sacrifice my sums to get a kill on the Fizz. Oh, I think she should have kept that one, but it's okay. Nice red buff proc. That's fine. Pretty sure we could have killed it if we were a bit more patient. A safe way to get the CS. He's gonna die. See ya. Oh, I could have gotten the kill. It's okay. I think she played out the safe way. Problem is that when people counter pick you, they will, you know, end up playing too aggressive because they get pressured into playing a lot more aggressively. So they had to win the lane before they get outskilled. And that is something you can take advantage of. You can see he's not a bad player. It's just that he doesn't understand the concept too well and that is something we can take advantage of you saw the elise was headed up here so it's pretty obvious that she would come back if he started playing aggressive we managed to bait him two times in a row so that luckily ended up in a kill for the elise so that's also nice still you're still gonna lose the trades by the way because it's fizz so want to chill out and you can see bone plating when that's up, that's when you can look for stuff. If he goes in like this, misses his E, you can trade with him. But when his E is up, you do not want to Q forward. That will result in him dodging everything and then you're losing all of your HP. If I took a tower shot right there, I would have to uh, reset. So far it's okay, he already used all of his potions, we still have one left. 
I'm gonna place a control ward here. And one over here. He could be bot side, but I'm just gonna play towards the top. He has no more potions left, so now is when we have to start our sustaining. When he goes for CS, we can poke him a bit. This one. Even though you prefer to have this to... You no. Know, tank some of the damage. When he does not have any more potions left, you can afford to trade a bit more aggressively. And you can also use your E to dodge his C, but your E zone is a bit shorter, the dash, when you dash. It's way shorter than his. So he can still easily hit you, unless he miss him. By it's on. You got a C out. When that E is out, guys, that's when you go in for trades. We have the ultimate to dodge coming stuff. Now his ult is up. Now it's when you have to watch out, because he can easily set you off for ganks. See, they're also keeping a bit more, a better track of the enemy jungler. Which is not always the case in the lower elo, so people are definitely way better here. Still a lot of mistakes, but definitely way better. We're gonna keep trading here. And if you struggle a lot, you can also get one MR item. Like the cloak. Because it actually gives you a lot of value. We will push this out. I actually want to not help with this so I can reset. But Lane is helping out, so hopefully that is enough. I actually want to place it over. I think I was a bit too far away. But it is what it is. So if you are struggling in the lane, you can just sit on this component. It's actually a high value for the gold that it's costing. So just sit on this and then later on in the game you get the force of nature, cause it's a very OP MR item. Missing. He's level 7 and also when Nocturne gets his ultimate up that's where things start to get pretty rough. Take out his C like this, and then he cannot trade back. But also keep in mind that will leave you vulnerable as well. When you are using a bunch of basic abilities to um, trade with. If you randomly ult me right now, it probably means that Nocturne or somebody else is coming in, so I would have to ult away. Be careful when queuing forward, that's a very easy opportunity for the fist to... Hold you. Oh no. Is that bot side? Where is he ulting? Oh, maybe I was out of... Oh, there he is. I think I walked out of range. Oh no, that's so sad. I thought I could get the kill. That's my bad, I should not have done that. She's still gonna win though. I hope. Don't tank the ults. Oh my god, what is she doing? Why does she walk straight into the ults? That's a bit unfortunate. I also trolled that one, but... Unlucky. It's fine though, we got the sums out of the fist. So he's not gonna have a very good time. Also, don't just keep buying the control wards. They are really OP, but can also end up costing a lot of gold. Because when you buy two control wards, that's half a kill worth of gold. I'm just gonna have this one up, you know, and if they take it out, it is what it is. Really huge straight. We can hit this one. And we'll take that kill. Oh, 
problem is that he's not used to people punishing his mistakes this hard. So that is what you have to learn to do. You can do that, you're gonna carry so many more games. Getting the plate the safe way, gonna place a ward here. So I can see what the fist is going to do after he pushed out the wave. It actually gave him a pretty big spike when he had the component. Flash coming out. Was that flashing Elise, I assume? Yeah, she's alive. Nocturne, use flash and ults, that's perfect. That is going to enable our aggressive plays. What here? Just pinging it so I get the fire gold. Now you can also take away the chickens. Just to extend that CS lead a bit more. See, we already have a massive CS lead at the moment. Fine, we have Vamp Scepter, so we can sustain back up. Goes for this, he's gonna take damage to the face. Yeah, you can see, even though we are fed, right, he can still fight us, and that's because of how the matchup works. Your name can get a bunch of kills early on, but he's still not at that massive power spike point. So assassins can still deal with you. But when you get to the point where we get the items, so we have the crit items, then we have some MR, that's where the counterplay for Fizz just completely disappears. He won't be able to do anything. Oh, looks like a huge E. That was indeed. Well played. Go for the Annie. Perfect. You see the target selection also becomes a bit better in this helo. That's nice. We should turn that into the Drake. I'll just keep pushing. Maybe I can get one more plate before it expires. We'll have to see. And we can just heal back up, so it's okay. I'm not gonna queue forward. Take tower shots for no reason. We're gonna keep pushing, and that way we can also heal up. You see, I saved the knockup of my Q to cancel our ult. So we don't just let them charge channeling abilities for free. Nocturne could be around this spot. Ultimate is almost ready to go, but we see the Nocturne now. Also using that E to like minimize the impact his ult has. Oh no, that was so unlucky. Try to hit the Nocturne. I think I just back off here, since we are sitting on so much gold, don't want to give away 700 gold for no reason. So I'll just go bot. You see, the moment they took down the bot side, they are rotating mid now. And this is the correct way of doing it. Now I'm gonna do this, guys, because we are playing against 3 AP. Just sitting on this component, that's it. I am not going to upgrade it, it is not needed at all. We're just sitting on the component and then we build into stuff like the Infinity Edge. This is because it had lots of burst damage and of course also AP Assassins and 3 AP Champs. Wow. That must have been very satisfying to pull off. Perfect, that should result in a free Herald. Just keep up the pressure, now it's bot time this time around. Oh, that's a mistake. He might just hold us. Unstoppable. 
That's why I saved my in. I don't use it immediately because against mobile champs, you usually want to bait out their stuff before you start chasing with the E. Otherwise, you just get dragged straight back, uh, back towards the ori original position. And this item is helping a ton, like a lot. Of course, not against the Nocturne or the AD carry, but against the three players on that team. Did he already take this? Oh mind. Might come try to take this. This is something I do all the time. When I push out the wave, then I invade the enemy jungle, try to take away their camps. He's up here. I think I just keep go bot side. Oh no, they got a shot down, unlucky. I'm just gonna stay bot side and getting a massive, massive CS lead over everyone else on that team. Aurelia has also been doing the same. She's also going for some MR. And that is something you should always like adapt your build depending on who you are playing against. See that barely dealt any damage. Build OP. There goes his ult. Even though he has a build that gives him ton of early game damage, the shield, the mower heal, and the MR, that is enough. Oh, that's Pally. There, I did not want to waste the ult. Let's take the fruits. It's at this point where these fruits are so OP. It's insane how much you're healing. But I can get the BF Sword, that would probably be a good idea for the next Drake. That is what we will be buying. This is just for the early game MR by the way. So remember you don't have to upgrade now, you can do it after you got 3 offensive items. So that could be Shield Bow, that could be Infinity Edge and then the Bloodthirst or maybe the Stance. And then you can get Force of Nature. Or you can get it as your item right after Infinity Edge if you need it, if you're falling behind. But usually that MR, MR you're getting right here, that's enough. Still staying in the side lane. Take the jungle camps. Somebody comes to check. Nice. Wow, she has so much burst damage as well. Can hop over this side. Oh, I didn't even get an assist. Nice, they can take the drake and I'll just keep pushing. Also denying the jungle camps. Always, always do that. It's gonna tilt the enemy jungle so much. Right, Harold coming in. One fifteen MR, by the way. That's pretty huge. Oh, I cannot see the damage it dealt. I guess Nocturne ult also blocks out that part, even though I don't think that's supposed to be like that. Or maybe it's because you are out of range, so it minimizes your vision. He could potentially land at a massive W if we did not zone him out. A bit too much ARAM. Try to channel the Q.
We shall take that one. Well, that is doing a lot of damage, wow. Probably because it was uh, still ramping up in damage. Can they end? I'm not gonna spend time walking all the way around. They can probably end, should be no problems. Yep, and that was the Platilo game. Okay, so we are in another diamond game, this time playing against the Victor mid, and he has summoned Eri. You know, when you play against these heavy early game poke type champs, Doran Shield and the second win combo is really OP. It's going to save you from a lot of unnecessary damage by giving you all of that free sustain. So that is what I like to do against, you know, stuff like the Victor or Rihanna, especially when they go summon Eri. So it's important that you don't get poked down too much level 1, so if possible try to dodge that second Q coming in. That will be pretty bad, otherwise it's okay because you're gonna heal up with this uh, drone shield and the second win combo. We just let him push in. It's pretty easy to gank later on, so we just have to chill in the early game and not, you know, get poked down too much to the point where he can invade our jungler. Oh no, he could actually die here. Oh, is Pike here too? Yes, Fiddlesticks lost his flash level 1 because he got caught out by an invade. We just stay back and we chill for a bit and not insit early on in the game. That would be a disaster. And if needed, if you happen to struggle a lot in these matchups, Witsend is an option. I don't see the pike, I don't know, oh he's spot now, okay. Yone struggles a lot against these Strom type champs because he has no mobility. Especially early on. Later on it can be manageable, but early on. It's definitely a problem. Because you don't have any reliable mobility. Your mobility on the Q only comes up after you stack it. And your E always strikes you straight back, so without flash, it's pretty doomed. Still wants to gang mid. That one hit, that's perfect. Big kill, nice, there we go. You see, if you can time your knock up with uh, what your teammates have, then it's way better, because yours is a skill shot, so for example, Phil Sticks, it's a lot easier for him to land his CC, which is the fear. So just wait for your teammates to use their stuff, and then you can use yours. It's a lot safer and easier to do it that way. Let's turn chat off. We can go with double here and then we can also get the refillable. Estral sitting on a double kill, that's nice. Renekton getting a kill topside, it is okay because it's against Garen. Now, if that was somehow Renekton mid lane, I would not be able to play the lane at all. These are like some of the hardest possible counter matchups, but it's pretty rare that it happens. Usually, it's like Aurelia. Which is very difficult if it's like super high elo, so like 200-300 LP master TM plus, it becomes really hard. But in diamond it's okay, even if you get counterpicked. Just have to play more towards your weaknesses and your strengths compared to lower elos, where you can get away with a lot more mistakes.
Blaine is in a good position right now. You can start going more aggressive um, in a couple levels, but pr preferably when you have your Ram Scepter as well, because then you can actually heal up some of that poke. Just keep, gotta keep it here since this flash is down too. Got level 6. By keeping it here, we limit what he can do. Can ult him. Right, I just had to flash in case that was not enough damage, but usually you can see it on your... You know, the E mark when it gets cut in half. But since I have so much attack speed, I was not quite sure. I just flashed just to be safe. This is like a safe way to push out the lane, by the way. So if you think you might get ganked and you still have to push out, then just use your E to extend the range. And then you can always dash back to safety. Well, that is a bit rough for the bot side. He should be pretty safe to play Estrel, but he also has a Velka, so I don't know. Can't help him, because I'm pushed in. Oh, bot lane losing this hard is a problem though. Go, 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 we have to go. Oh nice, she did not have... I don't think she has triumph, so it's okay, we got a shot down. But the issue here is that Victor got a lot of takedowns. Meaning that he's getting the uh, passive stacks pretty fast. We got a pretty huge shutdown on the Tristana, so 600 gold that way. Even though it looked pretty bad, it's okay still. Alright, so let's get back to the lane. Nice, okay. Try one for one. Garen can do well later on. He can work as a tank pretty much. You do need to get to items fast. Keeping him mid for a bit longer. Fine. Oh, he's staying. That, that means that Olaf might be mid. Did not have to use the ultimate right there. Kill 6 uh, CC was enough to uh, fix that, so we can keep pushing and if Olaf comes then we can help him. Only issue is Pike is mid. Right, let's zone him away then. Just have to play towards your strengths and then wait for ganks to come in. We have to take this fast. Nice, we'll take that one too. Uh, Israel. Yeah, they're so dead. They're not surviving that. Is this guy trolling? Pretty dump. He, this guy is making constant mistakes after mistakes, and that's why the AD carry is getting so fat. Now Victor is even also because of what he did, so... That is definitely going to make things a lot harder. But we can still win. Gotta play for the scaling. Victor is also another champ that scales like your name towards the later stages. Better in team fights. He's one of the late game 
And champs. Knew that will come in, using that first D to dodge that, and then go for a trade. I am sitting on a rip off, so I'm gonna heal up. On top of also having the Vamp Scepter. So I don't see Pike on the map, so he could actually be mid right now. There he is. Oh, I actually got stunned, man. What? Thought I was just uh, out of the range. I can't really do much right now because a lot of people are sitting mid lane, so if I go for an aggressive play, I'll probably just get ganked. At the AD carry, ins again. Got him away from the cannon. Whatever that's worth. Problem is the massive gap in the AD carry. Sight. Alright, we'll take that one. So he's doing the hell right now means I need to stay. Go for him. Kill off right here. That's a flash out. Night this guy. Oh my god, this Tristan is gonna kill us all. I have to get out all the way. He's sitting on two complete items. I just had to beg off all, no. Yeah, you see? This is what happens in bot lane meta when the enemy AD carry is just massively gapping the other. Then you can really get to see the um, difference because bot lane has the most impact. It is the best role this season. The games will become way harder. Just when the other AD carry gets capped, even though he, sh he shouldn't be. Exhaust is out, but it still sucks that I had to die. Fortunately. So lots of things we have to play around now. A fit Renekton, fit mid, and also fit AD carry. Least is farming up well, but he single-handedly is making the game harder. Because he doesn't know how to pilot his champ. We can still try to go for plays because we have fill sticks, so we have great engage. Your has been so that is what we have to play around. You should wait for me. Thing is, Victor can just cancel out his ults. So he has to wait. Now let's see if we can do stuff in the side lane. Getting to the side lane is what you want as your name, especially if you play against the mage. He's so fast though, what? Oh, he should have waited, man. What is that? He should have waited, that's so grief. Please get the kill. Should be free, nice, okay. Finally he did something. Everybody dying for it though. Don't go in melee range, man. Nice. Okay, finally. Getting slightly back into the game, but still, we had to secure the objectives mainly. And Garen had a hard time top lane, but he's still up in fire as yes, so that's fine. Let's get the sweeper. 
and take the poke. And he did. Nice, okay. Had to defend mid. This is uh, the mistakes he has been doing uh, the entire game, pretty much. Same things. So you can really see Diamond is not a skill dealer by any means. You just have to play slightly better macro than play dealer and then you're pretty much Diamond. You don't have to be good at the game. I just have to stay back. Garen is pushing topside. It's the Fetra next time. He get he can one shot you in a single combo. By the way, if he gets any power W off, one combo is enough to uh, take you down. A lot of kills early on in the game. Thirty six kills. Gonna get dove. It's nothing for them to take top side. I can just stay and try to defend. If they start grouping up, then maybe we can do stuff with the fill sticks, but still it can be rough. Because Tristana can always hold the fill sticks away. Now if I go in, it's really risky. And I do not want to dash in. Just gotta stay back, cause Pi could be here anytime. Good top. I need a bit more gold to get the Infinity Edge. Wants to go top or? Okay, that's fine. Okay, we've got the exhaust out. That's super worth it. Your exhaust is a lot more important than my uh, ignite. Hitting on three items. We have to look for a team fight now that her stuff is down. Oh my god. Bucks. We're just getting straight out one shot. Three items, man. Little thing is winnable. I got caught right there, so that's my bad. I tried to intentionally engage a fight because I thought there will, will be a good opportunity. It would have been if we like timed everything better, but I died too early on. Just have to uh, keep trying. Aaron was also not here, so it was a four versus five. Even Dumba that I tried to go for and engage. Should I ult in and get the kill? It would probably be worth it if I could, but he's so fast. Oh, he still does not die? What? That is so unlucky, man. That is so unlucky. I'm gonna die now, though. There's no way he's surviving that. We can go for this, I think, because their carries are down. But uh, Karen is not here, so probably not. Let's try and we can just disengage if they come. Why is he not staying within range? 
This is why we need to get back into the game. Oh my god, that was so unlucky what happened right here. I thought he would die to the um, cure order attack and then I missed that one. Then I flash in for the W flash and then I completely forgot that he heals when he's out of vision. But we got the Tristana, which makes everything worth it still. And now maybe we can fight for this one. They just have to not get caught around here. I need something that I can stack my two on. Look at this. It's just a couple of auto-attacks and I almost died. That's why I had to do the combo really fast. I'm gonna reset really fast and I need some armor for sure, otherwise I am not surviving this. But one player's down, so now if we have to force a great fight, now is the time. They're pulling out the Drake, which is smart. No, he's halting into early, I think. Oh, he got the Drake, but he's gonna die, no? Yeah. We had the Baron, so now was the time we had to uh, win the fights. They just waited a little bit. I could have been there. But he got the Drake, so... It's a decent trade. Right, we got what we wanted now, just get out. Victor is sitting on a massive spike and Tristana is coming to flank from the bot side. I bet this guy has not seen it yet. She's down here. I just gotta wait behind. Let's wait here. Yeah, I can bet you 100% he does not know. Israel is also sitting on a pretty big spike, so at least we have something. But the way you want to play with Estrel is that you want to let him poke. Same thing for Vilka, so if you just engage fighters, fights without poking, then it's gonna turn out to be pretty bad for us. I'm just gonna get the farm I can. I still don't have the armor to tank the Tristana, especially not when she has exhaust. So somebody down here. Just have to uh, disengage, uh, get out I mean. One for one or... Nope, one for zero, perfect. Even Garen is not tanky against the Tristana. Why are they going in without me? So we have to wait for the objectives and then try to secure these somehow. Just have to uh, call the Estrel. Oh, that's perfect. He's gonna die still, right? Yeah, but we got the Tristana, so that's always a huge value trait. Right, got another prior target. Can I get this guy too? Perfect, there we go. Now we can push mid. Now we can push mid, because they don't have any way clear. They only have the Renekton, so if they land their stuff, then we can just keep going. Aaron just needs a couple more items and he becomes the tank that he was supposed to be. It's just hard for him to tank now when... The Tristana was so fit. That's why he just got shredded to pieces almost. 
I'm sitting on so much gold and Israel's top side, so we should not be looking to fight. We just reset. I'm gonna get this, and then I'm probably gonna add a mass into a blood tester. Now I have some tankiness, still not enough. But when I have the blood tester shield, that is going to be a big help. And then I'll probably get Witsend or something for the Victor, because he's also insanely fed and probably has the death cap soon. But in these types of A rank games, you can see I'm not spending a lot of time in the side lanes. Because that would mean my teammates will just keep getting caught and then the opponents will use that to end the game. Therefore, we have to wait for this and try to keep your Q stacked finding something close that you can target. That way you can go for these quick engages with a knockup and then maybe force a flash or something. But there... We had to go for the Tristana Victor. These two only. They might try to sneak this one. Had to uh, get out, otherwise I just get bursted down. But this should hopefully stop them from trying to sneak the objective. Tristana can still jump over, so I'm gonna check anyways. There's a ward here. But we need to go for the Drake, but also at the same time cover the Baron, because they will be trying to do it. Oh, he should kill the uh, Pike. No mind, I'm out. See, the tankiness you get from the death stance really helps a lot. I would probably have got bursted down in no time. Right, got one person. That's perfect. The picks we are making is what helps us pull off this stuff. Now it's only Tristana alive, so they just have to silence them. I have to stay back in safety. Oh, she's going for the Drake. Okay, that's fine. This one is pretty much secured. I'm gonna go top side. Drake is down, she got this, but it's worth it now. Get some farm for ourselves, so hopefully we can afford the blood tester soon. Just gotta keep pushing a bit top side. Victor's alive soon, he's sitting on a pretty big spike too. Oof, almost missed the cannon. Nice, these are also up. How much gold do I need? Okay. Has to back off here, cause Pike. I'm sitting on so much gold. I just need enough gold for this. I'd rather have this than the Guardian Angel right now. Guardian Angel. Just have to not fight and let me get this. He can't be here, I can buy this, so I just have to wait. Last item probably going to be Witsend. Could also be a Guardian Angel, have to see how the game is going. Now we have to remember the, they have these two. So that means that if we combo, we have to chain our CC so they cannot get to use their stuff. Look at the shields I'm getting. That's gonna help so much with me surviving. Oh, you can't be there. You can't be there, bro. What? Poke is good, but he's taking 10 times bigger poke. That's alright. Remember, they have double stopwatch. You just have to buff up the waves. Prefer to have one split pushing, but the problem here is that people are getting caught, so we just have to group. Buffing up the waves here. A little bit of Baron we have left. Nice. Another catch. I tried to hit the Tristana, somehow that did not work out. 
Thankfully he survived. So this is how we had to play it. Like we keep taking one person down and now they have to poke. They just have to poke. And let me heal also. It's fine. The base is open. Can we go for this? We should be able to. Okay, he's going for the other inhibitor. That's fine. So they just have to not get caught here. Like this guy. Now just back off. I guess alive. They just have to back off. We have to play around my ult and the fill the stakes ults. I'm stacking up. The shield. They're getting caught again. That's the out. I will keep going if it was only the Tristana. I tried to hit her with the ult I missed, so my bad. Nothing I can stack the Q on. Sadly. Nobody coming this way. Look at the shield we are getting. That's insane. And look at the big shields we have gotten with the ore heal so far. Right, we see the Renekton, so I'm probably gonna head into the Wits End. I am two levels ahead of the Victor as well. So they could be waiting here, so it'll be pretty end to take that way. We have Vilkas behind. But they're still waiting to collapse onto me for sure. I survive. We're gonna lose another Drake because of these two. But it's not the soul. So it's not the worst case scenario. It's still bad though. Because they are these two are tunnel visioning big time. If I can defend this. I think uh, he should watch out. They probably recalled because there's no no one to contest the Drake. And Garen is doing well. He just needs to be careful. I'm gonna leave this one up for the Phil Sticks. I'm sitting on so much gold. Get this now. And also buying the uh, pot because the next fight is going to be for the Baron, so this could potentially decide the entire game. Yeah, I really need to stop running it now. See what the hell they still have? They have Guardian Angel and yeah, gonna camp in the bush. Can heal up, so it's okay. Look at how fast I'm healing because how hell that sustain. I'm not gonna queue forward because of that, exactly. He wants to engage onto me. Nice. That's perfect. That's well played. They really try to find a way to collapse onto me right there. Why is he not? Getting a Sonya's when he's getting caught so much. I don't understand. You just have to not die here, otherwise they're just gonna end it. And just play around the Estrel poke. Just have to let him poke, that's all. out. The shield is so nice to have. 
shield is so nice and also that sustain if you don't have sustain at this point in the game guys it's it's really done Yeah, their macro is so bad. I think that's the main issue we have right now. Garen is pressuring side lane, so they have to back eventually. Like a bot. Yeah, why is he buying this? I don't understand. need gold. They keep getting caught but luckily right now there's no um, objective up for them to take. I'll take that one. Always trying to find picks because if I don't they're gonna end it. I had this. So this is a full build game on Yone. One of the very rare full build. I just have to group. Doesn't know what to build, so you just gotta tell him. Yeah, 13 deaths by the way. Die 13 times. The drake is spawning, so we have to watch out, especially around here. Now we need to secure some vision somehow. If I can get the exhaust out of the Tristana and potentially the flash too, that'd be huge. I need to keep pushing mid side. He needs to ult the victor, because he cannot heal up. I have three drakes, so we have to contest. We have no choice. I think I'll be waiting here. This might not be worth it. Well, oh, this guy is taking the super safe path. What? Right, I got out just before I got CC'd. I'm gonna need to uh, stack up. Oh, it's fine, it's fine. We secure this one. Maybe we can look for an end. Probably not because they have really OP way clear. Man, I can't believe Victor actually was so scared. He took the entire way around. We need to get the inhibitors at least. I think the player I've been catching out all the time is the Pike, even though he should be probably the safest one to play for that team. But Garen is doing so much work too right now also. He's gonna use the Sonyas. Now we have to catch him. There we go. Be fine. The power of we go top. We don't have a wave, do we? we? Don't have a wave. We just gotta do this. Now we have. We can end. We can end. I'm gonna go for the Tristana always, and then E out just before his stuns goes in. Man, I play that so good. Well, that was a full build diamond lake game. GG's.
Alright, so we are in a diamond game and playing against probably Rumble. I hope it's Rumble because your next one is not playable. But either way, has sustain, first start item and also rune. Otherwise my champ is not surviving and that should help a lot with the early poke that he deals. I think he started with a E, so we should be fine to walk up. That's actually a pretty good one. Got all the three minions and then also hit him. He's also going Doran Shield. Issue with this matchup is of course they buff Rumble. So on top of being really OP right now, his early game was always instantly strong. And they also have a sack that I need to watch out for. That's not really something you can ward against. Effectively at least. That's a fine one right here since my W shield tanked a bit. I have to stay behind minions, I can't gank coming in. He can take out his flash, nice. That's huge. That's pretty good. Hopefully I don't troll it and lose my flash as well. But really hard to trade against Rumble. Because he just has so much built into his kit for the early game. There's a good chance to trade here when he goes into overload. Has to be careful of the auto attack stealing a ridiculous amount of damage. Wow, that was actually a pretty nice aim by the sec with the um, CC. He will be coming again, I'm pretty sure. Without a banquet of sorrow, an please hit it, please hit it. And that's what I like to see, bro. That's my bro right there. Nice. They punished him trying to camp mid. And you know, the higher elo you go, uh, the more often this stuff happens. You get punished really hard if you spend too much time. Bro, that was insane. I suddenly have a insane team out of nowhere, but that was nice. I also got the flash down on the Galio. Luckily I managed to E out in time. I'm gonna greet and stay for another wave. And then we're gonna place a ward here. This is to see what he's doing after I'm resetting. So if he's trying to roam or something, I can ping my teammates ahead of time. Nice. That is why I stayed, because then I can also get the refillable on top of getting tier 2 boots. But you, as you can see, if you go drawn shield and second wind here, Gives you a solid amount of sustain, so if he keeps poking you down, you're also gonna heal up under the tower. Wave is pushing towards me, so I don't need to grief it. Now I have to be a bit careful, you see the damage coming in. The main thing here is that you're just getting boots. You don't have AD or HP or anything like that. That's why, even though you're getting a kill this early on, you still lose the traits. You're not careful. I'll take that. We keep going. He does not have flash up. Got another kill on the rumble, so we're gonna, of course, we're gonna outscale pretty hard. Also, I had to watch out for the Renekton, so I'm gonna hover towards my jungler bottom side. Eight. Just to be annoying and. 
Force them to stay. One versus two bot lane for a little while. Rumble sub six now. This is why you have to start respecting his damage. That's a ward right there. I think I have to move. Looking a bit risky. Just keep going. Oh no, I think I die. Oh, oh, that was so close. That was so close. If I had my W up, I could have W the minions and then survived. I think I win a little bit to him. You can see like diamond games are pretty chaotic. Always lots of stuff happening early on. We got a pretty big spike, just unfortunate I gave him that kill. So he is sitting on some extra gold that he would not have gotten. So I should probably just have let him get away. But I secured us the Drake. That's something. Then now we can use the chance to get some good wards down. So against the sack, you want to ward up here. Because he always jumps from the other side of the wall. And also we get a little bit of sustain. Can still be a little bit rough. I'm gonna go and take the uh, fruits. No, he actually watered towards. I'm not gonna go all the way to the fruits because then I lose the mid wave and he might invade our jungle. I, you see, I go went in the moment his tornado flamethrower stopped channeling. Rish is walking back so he can lantern her out, hopefully. Because he's going bot. I'm just gonna keep pushing. She's alive, so I'm gonna push and go for the plate. Sag could be here, so it's a little bit risky, but I can ult towards the top. Okay, not more than this. That is fine. Bro, that is insane. What? It's just his Q and Ignite alone, and I just die. Nice. I should not have flashed. I don't know what I'm doing. That's a bit int. Now you can see how strong this champ is early on. Just Q and Ignite, and then he has flat magic pen, and I die. Lose all HP. Now I need to start focusing again, otherwise going to be a very rough uh, landing phase, mid. Watch. That could be here because my flash is down. Oh my god, that damage. Also has to be careful when queuing forward. We see Sag bot side now, so... That's a good one. Need to get some vision down here, um, around the bot side because of the Sag. Yeah, he is around here. That was a good trade. Like, I had to stay behind minions and then also play around... ...his flamethrower, because it's way too much damage. I'm not gonna push because he could be up here. Yeah, 
Yeah, there was somebody. I had a feeling there was somebody waiting. That's why I do not push. Especially against a sack. It's way too risky. Now I think I'm gonna push a bit. So we can get Pryo around the Drake. Hit the Q. Okay, not bad. I can ult him, but Sack could be up here. I'm lucky he does not have Prolos or something. Gonna stop him from being able to recall. And remember, you had to E out immediately. Otherwise, if I get got stun locked by the Renekton W, I would have died. You have to be really good um, at reacting with your E. Because of it basically working as a. Oh my god, what is that? Nice. Good job, Thresh. Man, so many global ultimates coming in, I'm completely confused on which ult was ours. Almost got scared by the Jinx ult. Oh no, do I die? Oh, extending too much. Making the same mistake again. Probably hit a bot side and ping them. He's coming from here. I'm pretty sure. Ying should be able to get out. Oh, nice. He overheated. That's so lucky. Okay. Oh, she's dead, I think. I just got a push mid. That's a big wave. Where is this guy mid now? What? Oh no, she got tagged. Gotta be sure to trade back, especially against the Renekton. That's like one of the worst thunders. Oh no. He's picking up a lot of kills spot side. He's even more fit than I am. That's actually not very good. I also gave him two shutdowns, I think. I might need to get some MR. But I will probably go for Wits End. Save the control ward. Now, but it looks like there's still 3 or 4 mid, so I just gotta stay over here. I think Sag is around. Yeah, he is. That's such a broken champ. What, man? Insane damage, though. I need some MR, otherwise my champ is not surviving against that. So, Woodsend has to be the purchase. We can sell this since we don't need it anymore. He's getting a 2 levels lead right now. Not quite 2 levels, but I'm getting zoned off the waves because they are 3 mid. Things are still pushing. 
really far ahead. It almost to kill him. Man. Let's see if we can kill him on the next attempt. He stays? Probably not staying. Nice, that was huge. That is what we needed, so now hopefully we can use that to secure the Drake. I dashed upwards here to not tank all of the damage and I got out and I actually think this is what saved me. I have to be honest, so... Wow. Was a bit too close. There's so many global alts. Okay, got the... Uh, Plants out for free, so I'm gonna go top right now. No point going mid because Jace can farm mid. So it's better that I go top to uh, pick up the wave. That's how I'm mid. Getting the Witch Sand is going to help out a lot. Especially in this lane. Now he has to chill, otherwise he's gonna get one shot, cause that champ is sitting on a big spike at the moment. Alright, we can back off. And if any jungle camps up, I would take these as well. So if I push for this tower, Zack is gonna be here and probably Rumble and Renekton too, and I would end up dying. But that is not something we'll be going for. Things has to survive. The flash is out. Nice. Just making sure he can't jump onto my team. Coming in. Nice. So I can, I think Jace go spot, so I just stay here to cover and pick up any jungle camps that are up. You can see like diamond, obviously not what I would call high elo, but fly a lot better. As you know, uh, playing the counter matchup, so it becomes a lot more difficult to manage something like Yone if you had to blind pick him. That's the point where you can start banning uh, counters. We can get the wit set now. That's gonna help a lot against this full flat magic pen build. For this, we can itemize into normal stuff, and then you can also get Force of Nature. So we have three drakes, thanks to our jungler securing everything. I'm just gonna go top and get some CS for myself. Cause we are back up in XP now. But so this wood sand is gonna help big time surviving all that burst. We get some vision down over here. And this is why you get Witsen, guys. Bit too many. I did not expect like almost the entire team coming, but yeah, it's an easy win for my team because they committed everything trying to get me. We see the uh, what Witsen helpful right there. Otherwise, I would have gotten one shot by the Rumble. That's why I always like adapt your items. To the opponent you're playing against and also because they have 3 AP. And Renekton ultimate also deals magic damage if I remember right. Can I form and then he dies? Nope. 
think it's better he does not risk. Wait, did he not see that? They just has to reset and Nico board right now. It's perfect because the uh, Drake is coming up soon. Kings needs to not abandon the tower. A little bit risky because we don't have any vision around the bot side of the map. Let's get the XP at least. This is the safe way I try to do it when I want to get something, but I don't know how many people are camping. Or if anyone is camping for that matter. Oh, that's some really nice hooks. I think we can do this and then when we bait them in, go for the kill. My E up soon. See, so you just gotta wait. When you get to close range with your Q stacked up, they will dash because they cannot, they don't know when you're. Third Q is coming up. That you just wait. Keep running towards them. When they use the dash ability, that's when you hit them with a knock up. It's too much ARAM to like have good macro in this game, so you just rely on your team fighting abilities. But we have the soul right now, which is insane. That is going to help me as well as the Jinx out a lot. I'm gonna go top side here. Need a bit more gold for this. Hook. Oh, okay, that's pretty close. It's okay, he's getting zoned away from his jungle. Just T out before I get hit by the CC. I'm not gonna flash for this, not really worth it. He's not gonna jump, he just dies. Wits and really OP guys, it is so good. Playing against lots of magic damage, then be sure to buy that. Boss of Nature is also another OP item, but it does not give any damage. This, you don't fall as much behind, damage wise. That's if you got the force of nature. I can back off here and then I can get Infinity Edge. The next item, let's see. We need some tanky stats, so I'm gonna go into probably this stance or Guardian Angel. This should be bot side because his TP is coming up soon, but I would like to pick up some CS. Uh, CS. It's like a complete ARAM game. We're gonna leave the rip off for the Jinx. We just keep pushing. If somebody tries to uh, come up. This is usually what I do in like a normal game where there isn't that much ARAM. Is that I try to spend a lot of time in the side lanes. But then this can happen where people get caught out of position. Oh, just slightly missed. But they're probably gonna die now, all of the right. Keep chasing. Wow, that's some insane damage from the Jinx. We can buff up. That's not worth it out. Oh, am I dying? Okay. Jeez, they're theft. Almost died for that one. 
But that was a diamond, high diamond game. Okay, and this game is in Diamond 1 MMR. It's almost massive here, but... Yeah, playing against an Ari mid lane. Also a champ mid lane that actually pokes a lot. Can play really aggressive, therefore I'm also running a sustained setup with the Dawn Shield and the second wind. That way we can get through the early laning phase, you know, against Electrocute. And the W start you can see, it actually makes it pretty easy for her to... Go for these little one traits where she procs electrocute. Like this, so that's why I have sustain. Second win and drawn shield helps a lot with this. Don't want to be pushing the lane though. We're just gonna let her do the pushing and we're gonna stay under the tower. We also have a Nunu, pretty easy gank smit. Before level 6 at least. Also running one attack speed shot, okay. That's something you normally do on mages nowadays because it makes it a lot smoother when your auto attacks come out and also when it comes to trading and last hitting. I mean, it's a bit of a awkward timing. Not looking at the wave. Hit the knock up, but man, look at the wave, bro. Yeah, I knew that would come in. Should die, right? Should be that. Nice. Good job on that one. That's why you just gotta be patient. But I will not be able to fix this wave. I actually want to push this. I could look for a freeze, but... So many minions and I also don't want to risk her, you know, destroying my tower early on. Might have to stay for another wave. But you see how I dodged that charm coming in? Because I knew she would focus me. Uh, that's the only way that I could die right there if I got hit by the charm and then ignite it. Definitely have to base soon. That's kind of, I don't care if she freezes this. He tries to gank again in a bad wave. Like, that is what happened. Fun recall. This doesn't really matter. Normally it's pretty bad, but... Lydia's up there. About to get baited, I can feel it. Good thing here is that your second part of your E, so when you recast it, it will also cancel out Lilia's ult. Okay, nice. She's gonna survive, right? Nice. And Ari is also sort of a counter to your name. Just due to the fact that she can always charm you mid-dash. Meaning that you don't, or you can't really engage. Right, wave is fixed. Now that is going to bounce back, what? Bro, what? I did not know he could turn like that. We can get this to shove in. That'd be nice. So that is what I'll be trying to do. If he tries to freeze it, she's gonna lose HP from the minions. And we can just keep up the pressure because she is out of potions. So it'll be pretty limited what she can do right now. So now is when we try to keep her in the lane so she cannot abuse her early game. Good traits. Just slowly whittling her down. And when she, when she gets to 6, what's really important here is that if you're going to all in, 
You have to absolutely chain the Q knockup with the ultimate, otherwise you can just use the ultimate to run away every single time. She will not recall because she would lose this wave. But she has level 6 right now. Thanks for the 5 gold. Nami. Let's go. He flashed Soiva. Let's just make sure she dies. That's a free one. And this is what Pryo gives you. She's still stuck on the tower by the way. She has no um, potions and low mana too. So I'm gonna give Pryo for my jungler so he can do the Drake and if Lilia tries to contest then I'll be there before. We don't care about this poke. Thanks to the rune setup we have. Winning in CS2, she's still stuck mid lane. Be careful when queuing forward, that's another easy punish for the Ari. So you can use the first part of your E to dash the incoming charm, but good Ari players will not use the charm immediately. Just gonna stay stuck here and I can just keep pushing it out. That's the charm. And she has to decide between recalling or staying in lane and losing pressure. That's why I just keep up the pressure right now. Even if Lilia comes, I can just, you know, ult out, or maybe I might even be able to win. Fight. That's a nice one. Fine, I survived. This is how you can dodge your ult, by the way, you see? Recasting your E like this. Nice help too, good timing by the Nunu. No ultimate on this one, no ultimate on Ari, and no ignite. So that should help out my teammates, hopefully. Great stuff happening bot side. So you can get a pretty big component, like it's a pretty massive spike if you can get this item here. Otherwise just get the Vamp Scepter. And since we are playing against double magic damage, basically third bot, we don't really count the Nami. Wood Sand after Shield Bow can do wonders, especially if you are falling behind. Doris can outscale top. Yes, it can be pretty difficult early on. He cannot freeze this one. Gonna get some vision down. I always like to place a ward up here. I'm gonna check these um, Herald. That's a ward right here too. This is mainly difficult early on, the matchup. Now it's fine though, because we managed to get a lead. But it's very difficult early on, uh, she will be trying to poke you a lot. As long as you go even, you're gonna outscale pretty hard. He is getting closer to lethal range, so if I can land a knock up. This, she is toast. And we can push for one plate. Lilia might be here, but we have Rakan close. They can, going for the second one is pretty greedy of me, but my E is coming up soon. This is basically what is crucial in this matchup, is that if you ever want to all in and actually get the kill. Oh nice. Then you have to absolutely chain the third Q with your ultimate, otherwise he can just ult out every single time because ultimate has a very low cooldown.
We're pretty far ahead CS wise and also three kills, so it's going pretty fine so far. You see, Diamond is pretty. You don't have to play perfect, not even close to get to Diamond, because people still make a lot of mistakes. The main thing is that you just have to focus on making less mistakes than you would do in lower elos. And mainly mastering when you're allowed to push the waves and when you're not, and also if you can learn how to freeze. Because those things actually start becoming crucial. Um, Especially in these silos. But this is almost mastered here, so. Yeah, Nuno coming in. I'm gonna try to bait out the champ. I'm gonna walk back a bit. She won't come here. I think she keeps placing a ward in the middle of the lane. But the drag is coming up, so I'm gonna push this out. So we can help. But Pryo is super important in these helos because you'll be able to do stuff like this. The thing is that on Yone, you don't really have it unless you are able to win the lane. You see, dodge the ults. I have to help still because Ari is gonna come. A flash out. No doubt. So we just keep going uh, mid and apl uh, applying pressure at all times. She has the Herald. Yeah, Nuno's coming. It's nice. I did see her, so I have the ultimate up. I'm ready to uh, channel. Did I get the kill? That's actually my bad. I messed it up because I went in the E2 early on, but I also did not want to uh, lose the stack Q. But we could have gotten both kills if I was a bit more patient. That mistake from my side. Still got a kill, so it was not completely wasted. Definitely be careful when you Q forward here, because one charm under the tower, and she just ults in and you die. Any out, and then you also have the chickens here that you can take meanwhile, or you start to heal up a little bit. I'm gonna keep pushing, but still be careful um, because you are somewhat low HP in Scenari. And she flashed out, nice. I can look for reset too. I don't think she will stay, because it's a cannon wave. She would have to stay for a while, and it's pretty risky. They're winning. Oh, that's a nice play. Both of them died though. So let's go for a scent. Just to show it off. I actually did it in another game as well. But since double magic damage is actually pretty decent, um, you get, you know, of course, not as much damage as Infinity Edge, but at the same time, you become tanky and then you also get a little bit of extra magic damage. So if they start going Seeker Soundguard or something, this becomes even better. And of course, you also synergize with the attack speed. This is perfect kiting around here, you see how I always try to weave in those abilities and auto attacks in a way where she cannot hit the charm. This up? Oh, it's not. I just keep pushing mid here. Oh no. He's just gonna ult, I think. let him die. You're pretty terrible.
This is like a safe way that you can push out the lane. Oh my god, come on. Oh my god, that was such a clean combo as well, but the CC messed us up. It's fine, our Siva is getting pretty fat. But well, that was going to be a very nice combo. I think she might be able to get the tower now, so we'll take it. That's actually pretty smart, giving Nami the shutdown. That way no one else can get it, so I understand what he tries to do right there. That's also something you see a lot in higher elos there, where um, they intentionally give away the shutdown, but to the support. And the supports always get baited into uh, taking the kill. You just let your AD carry farm mid. I think Nuno should go mid right now. And you go to the side lane. But actually survive for longer just because I had the shield bow. Otherwise in these cases you just get blasted. They're grouping up so I have to watch out. Just gotta stay back here and push out the waves, so somebody has to come and defend. Okay, I'm ready. Well, that did not hit the Ari. Doesn't matter. It's gonna come out this way, I think. Let's take up the Q. Oh, that almost hit in the center. I would have uh, died for sure. Uh, quick. If, if we can secure that one, that'd be nice. I think I'll just go ahead and reset. And just sell the drone shield. Just gonna reset um, at a safe position. Now we have this. So a lot more tankier. This is something I can recommend if you're playing against double AP. So if they have AP mid and AP jungle, this is fine to do. But not if they have like AP mid and then AP support, then you don't care because a lot of times you're not even going to meet the support. But the jungler will definitely look to be camping you when you play stuff like Yasuo and Yone because they're very easy targets for the junglers. I'll go top side. Gonna give some vision around here. Can I also gonna take out the uh I just help I think. I'll go top now so the entire way does not crash in. He's pretty strong, um set. He also has ignite, so have to be careful about that one. Even though you're ahead on your name. You're still squishy, because most of the items you're building just gives you damage and attack speed early on. Has to watch out for the set. He could be waiting here. Luckily not. Yes, that's a bit too much. They should have waited a little bit, but Fiora is pressuring. I'm gonna go here too, just so they don't attempt the Baron, that's fine. They are three top side, so Fiora can get a couple hits on the tower maybe, and I just keep pushing top so they cannot send everybody bot. Oh, come on, you had the flash up? Oh, that's a ripoff. You can get it, I don't mind. Oh, yikes. You messed up. Okay, we have Na Ari bot side, and Nami's gone.
And also when you do the Baron on Nuno, should be relatively safe. We gotta wait for his uh, game. We got that one, nice. And see, even though I have the Wits End, still really good trading potential top side. I went straight for the Nami. I just had to hit that CC, initial CC on the Nami and she was toast. But it's pretty much the only guarantee combo you have on Yone is the Q3, so the stack Q into the alt. But at the same time, it, it is not guaranteed if you're doing it in super close range. You have to do it a bit from afar. You're closer to the maximum range on your Q3. Otherwise, when you hit the knock up on your Q in melee range, there'll be a short time where they are on the ground, so they can use that to flash away or dash away before your ult comes in. Use the delay. We'll just keep pushing. We have the Nunu shadowing. Nunu snowballing. I think he just wants the uh, blue buff. Yes. Okay, I was just about to ult. If that one hit, I would ult it for sure. No minions that I can queue to. In that case, you have to be a little bit careful because without being able to queue something, your engage is kind of uh, non-existent. I think that's a bit too uh, heavy engage. What? Jesus. Oh my god. That's my bad. I should not have given that because they might get the... Last break now, because I got caught. He has ult, should be fine. Okay, nice. You also have Fiora up. Ooh. Right, the healing zone is up. Nice, that's pretty clean. have silver coming as well so that looks like the drake is secured and that's going to be the soul pretty much over at this point and there's some support fighting going on really wants to kill there we go And the Herald absolutely destroying their base. So this is pretty much over, but it's a good example of how you can play out the macro in a bit higher ranks. So this is Diamond 1 Master Tier, so you don't have to be, you know, as good because Diamond 4, which is the entrance to Diamond, it's way worse than this. I cannot E out. Just have to get out all the way. Might get altered by the uh, Ari. Cannot heal now. And so are taking the fight. If she goes over here, you can also look for an ult. But I think I'll stay mid here and then I keep pushing this out. They're all good, it's all good. Nice, and we can just go for the base. But this was the last game on how to get diamond, so I really hope this series was helpful guys. Um, let me know if you have any questions, and as usual, thanks for watching, and see you all next time.